All right, let's get into it. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on a major new partnership. But forget all the headlines for a minute. We're going to break down the pure, raw mechanics of the economic engine that's powering ICP and ARO. So let's start with a really big question, because it kind of frames this whole conversation. What happens when a supercomputer gets a superhighway? This is the core idea we're going to unpack. And honestly, everything else just builds on top of this. You know, our goal today is really simple. We're going to ignore all the hype, all the noise, and just focus on the engine itself. We're talking about the fundamental economic forces at play here. Think of it like we're popping the hood on a car to see how it really works. To get this, we have to start with a really simple but powerful metaphor. So for this first part, let's call it a brain needs roads. This gets right to the heart of the fundamental why behind this entire thing. Now, what's so cool about this is how simple it all becomes when you look at it this way. Just imagine ICP is this super smart brain, right? And ARO, well, ARO is a massive system of roads connecting to it. The apps and AI that are running, those are the cars driving on the roads. And the fuel that powers them all, that cycles, which is basically the gas. And this right here just brilliantly shows the problem they're trying to solve. You see, before ARO, the brain was there, but all the roads to get to it were owned by just a few huge companies. It created these massive traffic jams, you know? Cars would get stuck and gas usage just stayed low. But now, after ARO, it's like roads are popping up everywhere and anyone can help build them, which means the cars can move way faster, the brain gets used a whole lot more, and, well, more gas gets burned. So the crucial takeaway here, and if you remember just one thing from this section, let it be this. The entire point of this partnership is to get the brain used more. It's really that simple. It is all about driving real utility. Okay, that makes sense, right? So let's build on that and move to our next section, choosing your lane. Now that we understand the why, let's make this a little more personal. Where do you potentially fit into this whole new ecosystem? And this brings us to a really practical question. Based on the mechanics we just talked about, how can you, as an individual, actually participate? Well, the source material lays out a few very distinct roles you could play. So, role number one is the ICP neuron holder. You can think of this person as saying, I believe in the brain. These are the folks who lock up their tokens to show they have a real long-term belief in the core compute. And for doing that, they get to earn yield and have a say in governance. Then you've got the second role, the ARO node provider. Their whole motto is, I help the brain talk to the world. See, instead of running the brain itself, they provide the hardware, the on-ramps, the roads we were just talking about. And for doing that, they earn rewards from all the network traffic they help bring in. And this is a really key insight, okay? Running a full-on ICP node is a massive, like, data center-level commitment. It's a huge deal. ARO nodes, on the other hand, are designed to be the normal human entry point for people who want to help the network scale, but without that kind of crazy investment. This table just gives us a fantastic at-a-glance summary. Let's walk through it. If you just hold ICP, you're putting in money, and what you get is potential value if the whole thing grows, but your main risk is just price volatility. As a neuron holder, you give up your time by locking your tokens, but you get yield and governance power. But the risk is you can't touch your funds. And then, as an RO node provider, you give your hardware and your time, and in return you get rewards from actual usage. The big risk there? Well, it's adoption risk. What if nobody uses the roads? Okay, now for the part that really ties this all together. Section three, the economic squeeze. This is where we get into the pure, unfiltered economics of how supply and demand are designed to create value in this whole system. This is the good stuff. And I wanna be super clear here. This next concept is the big one. According to the source, this isn't some marketing spin or hype. It's a fundamental mechanic. They describe it as being like economic gravity. It just is. So the first force at play here is something called Mission 70, and its entire purpose is to control the supply side of the equation. It's designed to reduce the rate at which new ICP is created. It's all about tightening that supply. And then you have the second force, and that's ARO itself. ARO is the demand side engine. It's designed to dramatically crank up the demand for ICP by driving that real-world usage, you know, getting more cars on the road, which means more ICP has to be converted into cycles, into gas, to power everything. So what happens when you're controlling supply with one hand and you're cranking up demand with the other? The source puts it perfectly. Together, they squeeze the middle. And this squeeze creates this really clear chain reaction. 
First, because of Mission 70, fewer new ICP are getting minted. Second, because of ARO, way more existing ICP is getting converted into cycles. Third, applications are burning through more of those cycles. And the end result? It's just simple economics. The supply tightens while the demand from real usage is rising. So let's bring this all home, our final section, why this matters. This is all about how to really think and talk about this partnership based on the mechanics we've just broken down. And the framing here is absolutely critical. The source material is really clear on this. It says, hey, don't go around saying things like buy your RO nodes, number go up, because that's just pure speculation. Instead, the correct way to frame it is, this is how real usage reaches ICP. The focus has to be on utility, on the actual work that's getting done. So here it is, the entire value chain laid out in five perfect, simple steps. Step one, ICP is the brain. Step two, ARO gives it the roads. Step three, those roads bring traffic. That's the real usage. Step four, the traffic burns fuel, the cycles. And that brings us to the final crucial step. Five, the burned fuel is what ultimately makes the brain valuable. It's a direct, beautiful line from infrastructure to utility. And really, that's the final takeaway. When you strip everything else away, this whole partnership, it's not about hype. It's not about fancy logos. It is all about the mechanics. Simple, powerful, interconnected economic mechanics. Thanks for tuning in.